Kyrie Irving has been named the Western Conference Player of the Week. This is for the week of April 1st through April 7th. And uh, it's a little bit noteworthy, not just because it's another Maverick not named Luka Doncic to win the award, but because Kyrie Irving has not won this award since the 2014-2015 season. No, that is not a typo. Kyrie Irving, despite this being the fifth such time he's won the award, has not won it in almost a decade. So kudos to him. This is a, a huge moment for him. Any kind of positive NBA media coverage for Kyrie uh, is a welcome change of pace for him, obviously, with the last few years. So let's talk a little bit about his performance here. In that stretch of games, Dallas went 3-1, and one, and Kyrie was a huge part of that, averaging 31.8 points per game, up from his season average of 25.8, shooting... 52.5% from the field and 40% from beyond the arc. That That is a huge statement for that. This is a crucial stretch of the season for the Mavericks. Some tough opponents have come along. They've had to contend with that. They're trying to stake their claim to at least the five seed in the Western Conference. And when you look at across the board, the West, the, the teams that have had the most games missed by starters, Dallas leads that category almost by a country mile. Like they really... I've had to battle injuries. So for them to be in this spot is huge. Kyrie himself, I think, has missed like 22 games. So huge for them to be in this position here. And Kyrie coming in in the crunch. There's a reason he is Mr. Fourth Quarter. He leads the NBA in fourth quarter scoring. And it's a perfect compliment to Luka, really, because Luka is the league leader in first half scoring, I believe. And I don't know if Kyrie is the overall leader in second half scoring, but certainly fourth quarter scoring. Having the ability to have both of those guys where Luka comes out, makes the early statement, sets the tone, and then Kyrie is like your fourth quarter floor general and uh, closer, but then you get to crunch time and either of them can do it. When they're both in their groove, there's just nothing you can do. You just have to hope that you're just, just fortunate enough for one of those guys to miss a big shot. But the thing is, they're both so clutch it, it's hard to actually bank on that as a strategy. So Kyrie Irving, I mentioned in this last video, talking a little bit about that Mavs Rockets game. Kyrie had 25 points between the fourth quarter and overtime in that game, shooting 69% from the field, 33% from three, uh, perfect at the line as well. So that's huge. I think the other starters combined for like 19 points during that stretch on like 35% shooting. So Kyrie able to come out pace things withstand the the barrage by the rockets and similar to that game on the first when the mavericks ended the rockets 11 game win streak with Derek lively being out right now the mavericks have had to go small at times and houston in that game uh really really tried to take advantage of that with a late push but Kyrie basically just said like nah <laughs> not happening and you kind of saw that a little bit here again in this game. Again, a huge, huge performance from him. Yeah, we get Dante's redemption, uh, Dante's inferno, if you will. We get PJ Washington then with a couple of huge threes in OT as well. All of that, awesome. It's not just Luke and it's not just Kyrie, but Kyrie does go for 48 in that game. Again, 25 in the fourth quarter and overtime. Just phenomenal stuff there for, for him to be able to match. And I want to pull up here. There's actually a cool stat about the company that he joins with this here. So and on Q, I now can't find it. Kyrie Irving is, I think, one of five Mavericks now to score at least 48 in a game. So the first guy not named Dirk or Luca to do this in 20 plus years obviously like 25 years a quarter century you just don't get these kind of performances from you know co-star mavericks now obviously he's like the 1a right now he's really stepped into that role he's not playing like the number two option for dallas he's playing like 1a i don't i never know how to say that do you say it as one and 1a or is it 1a 1b whatever variety you want he's on a very similar level or just a like quarter step behind Luca in that pecking order, but their roles complement each other so well. They're both able to feast on defenses and take advantage when they need to. 
and it's just a perfect balance here. It's the reason the Mavericks have been so lethal, why they've won like 14 out of 16 games or whatever, um, and why they've just been so good in this closing stretch here now as we move into the final week of the season. So we will see where we go from here, how the picture is going to look for Kyrie. But this is a really cool moment for him. Again, for everything he's had to kind of battle through in terms of media perception and all of that in the last few years, to the constant questions about like, oh, is he going to the, to the Lakers to reunite with LeBron? Is all this happening? It's been just a barrage of that. And it's really not been until the trade deadline this year that I feel like that talk has finally quieted, whether it's Kyrie commenting on feeling like he's kind of found a home with Dallas and that he, the people of the city have embraced him and he's embracing them. Uh, whether it's his chemistry with Luca, you see at the end of OT, Luca makes that layup basically in like the final seconds to just put the exclamation point on that win. And the first guy he goes to is Kyrie and they kind of hug each other and they're exhausted, but you can see like, they know like we just went through a war, but we came out on the other side of it and they're just, they're vibing. Like they, they gel as much criticism as there's been in the past about like how well both of these guys can lead teams, how well that they're able to, you know, really be embraced by their teammates and not just kind of be like self-centric them coming together like this is a really really cool moment it looks like they are exactly who one another needs at this stage in their careers and uh it makes you wonder like what is the ceiling for this mavericks team Kyrie in a groove healthy is a, a, a ultimate game changer for the mavericks aspirations like truly really is now obviously there's still a week left in the season. You got to see overall health wise where you're at. I do think a big part of that is going to come down to how does Derek lively look when he comes back? How soon does he come back? I, I, I still have some reservations about this team when they're forced to go small, when they're able to go, you know, they're, they're two center rotation there with Gafford and with lively, their size, their athleticism, their defense, their rim protection is so, so good that it just completely opens up the offense for them. And they're able to, they're able to take it to you. You know, you're, you're not able to bully them inside and score at will in the paint, which has been for the past several years. It feels like just an automatic two points for the other team. It's when they bait you into shooting threes that they would have a chance. And with the modern NBA teams don't think about it and don't question it. And they just do too much of that anyway. So it's, it's really phenomenal seeing how this team has transformed and Kyrie Irving being Mr. Fourth quarter. He is, he is really a big part of that closing role. If he's not the closer, he's absolutely the setup man. And you can't ask for a better setup man in the league. Like, I really don't know that there's a backcourt, especially when both guys are on, but I really don't know that there's from an offensive perspective, a better backcourt in the league. You can say there are better teams. I'll grant you that. But this, duo is just filthy in, in the best way filthy uh a handful for anybody on a given day so kudos to Kyrie western conference player of the week let's see how the mavericks close out this final week of the season but let me know in the comments what are your what are your projections for the mavericks record this final week of the season where do you think they end up seeding are we locked into a rematch with the Clippers certainly looks like it. Let me know in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the Dallas prospect. And until next time, guys, remember every legend was once a prospect. Peace.